and welcome to Crime and Justice. Oh dear. Hold on. Just gotta get my book me. Hold on. Oh. Gotta put some down, write some down. Uh. So today I don't know if anyone's seen it, but last night I was watching it and I was watching it again today. And I cannot get over Jen Soto. Hold on, I'm just about to go in. Big a cat's backside. Go and eat your dinner. Right. I thought I'd give him the dinner. They'd be quiet. They normally are, but he's not being quiet. Anyway, so I watched this video and it was an audio again of Jen Soto being questioned. I like that cop. I like that detective. So the way she can turn her tears on and off. One minute she's in floods of tears, then the next minute is oh no, oh like all sweet and in your scenting. I'm thinking, what the hell? Anyway, back to today. Oh yeah, I've got my heating fixed. But now, I think I need the radiators need bleeding. So I need to get uh, one of them key things that bleeds the radiators. Because the heating's coming on and I can feel the warmth in the radiators but they're not getting as hot as they should be so i'll give it till saturday i might order one on amazon and they come to a bar the next day sort of thing so, anyway. so we'll see we'll see if i have to bleed the radiators i hope you've all had a good day or are having a good day i've had a bit of Bit of a busy day, but I haven't been out, I've just been busy, just been busy, busy, busy. I normally am on a Friday, a uh, Thursday, see, I even get my days wrong. I normally am on a Thursday. Anyway, we're going to continue looking at that document, and last night, I swear to God, I sat up till like 2am in the morning, 2am, 2.30, going through the rest of that document and um, hiding all the names, all the addresses, all these little words that we're not supposed to say on YouTube, and everything. I thought, oh, God, it um. So, it's like 2.30, I think it was 3.30 I got to bed in the end. By the time I got off here and then went and chilled out for be. Right, and then the cats were just sitting there looking at me going, when are we going to bed, Mum? So I said, oh, God, yeah, I've got to go to bed. So I went to bed about 3.30, knowing I've got to be up by, like, 8. Because in case that uh, guy came to do my heating. Because sometimes I can come any time between 8 a.m. and I think it's 5 p.m. So... But I'm lucky, I'm right by, my bedroom door is right, fairly close to the front door. So if he'd have knocked the door, I'd have heard him. Plus my cat would have gone mental off the bed. You can't get a better, I'll tell you, people go on about dogs being a, a guard, guard for your house. Try getting in my flat and pass my two cats, honest to God. You'd be lucky if you come out alive. Yesterday when the guy knocked the door, I didn't hear the door, but I knew someone had knocked my door because my one cat's ears went up and he went running out of the living room and up the hallway and I thought, that's someone at my door. Today, the same again. For love you, Bobby. You're the perfect cat to protect my home. He tells me every time there's someone at the door. Apart from when it's my son and my son's trying to sneak in. 
scare the fucking shit out of me. Anyway, so I hope you're all having a nice day. It is Friday tomorrow. So if you're working, you got one more day at work and then you got the weekend off. I think we should have two days at work and five days off. Do you think that sounds good? I've always said that. Why do we only get two days off a week when you're working? Saturday and Sunday. I think you should get more than two days. But then again, on the one job I did, I was lucky if I got a weekend. I only got a weekend off because I said, I'm not doing these days no more. I want my two days off. So I used to have, um, what was it? A Wednesday and a Sunday off. I didn't mind working Saturdays. Saturdays were boring. But I liked to have Sundays off. But I only worked half day Tuesday. So then I had Tuesday afternoon and all day Wednesday off. Then I didn't go back into work until Thursday afternoon. So really I had got two days off. And then... I go to work Friday morning, lunch and evening and tuckings. And then I go to work on a Saturday and do the mornings and the lunches. And that would be it. I wouldn't work again then till Monday. So that was my week. I used to love my week when I did it like that. Well, I've now had two days off together. Because I never got anything done on those two days because I thought, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Never did. But when you have one day off, or a day and a half off, you think, well, I've got to get it done today, because I won't have time tomorrow to do it. So, that's how I used to like my days off. Tuesday afternoon to Thursday afternoon. Right? I'd have off. And then I'd have Saturday afternoon and all day Sunday off. Some weeks I'd only do a Monday morning. Some weeks... I'd do a Monday afternoon, and some weeks I'd do Monday a- morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon and evening. But I was doing, I did go 21 days at one, at one point, 21 days working from 7 in the morning. So I was getting up like about 6 a.m. every morning. Luckily, my first client where, where I lived at the time was a little two-minute walk from where I lived, come out and where I was living down the road, cross over, and I was there. So I could leave at five to seven, well, five to seven, and be there before seven. But I went 21 days doing those hours, seven till ten. And I wasn't getting up finishing till about quarter past ten, half ten, some nights, because I was that far behind in my visits. You know what I mean? So I wasn't getting home till about 11. And then I wasn't eating because I was too tired. And then I'd go to bed and I'd be up again at 6 in the morning. I wasn't eating breakfast. I'd probably grab some at about 11 a.m. in the morning, 12 p.m., 12 noon. And then I'd go again through till 3, 4 when I'll pop back home, have a quick lunch, a uh, quick, quick to eat before going out again, full of tuckings, like at 7 o'clock at night. But I did that for 21 days straight. And I said, I can't do this no more. I need my weekends off, or two days off in the week. If you're not going to give me weekends, give me two days in the week. But I'm not doing 21 days straight from 7 in the morning till 10 at night. Any more. So I did, and then I moved to another place in Scotland, and um, they had me working from, I was having to leave my house at 6am in the morning to be picked up, to meet my next colleague, a colleague at quarter past six, to start the next job at 7am, and I wasn't getting back till half eleven at night between 11 and 11.30, and one night, we'd had such a stressful day, me and my colleague. I walked in, went in the kitchen, 
grab my vodka, grab the little glass, pour some neat vodka in it and lock it back. I thought, I can't do this. And my daughter was going, Mom, you can't do that. I said, I need this. I was a nervous wreck. I've been on the go since 6 a.m. that morning. I was up at 5.30, 5 a.m., 5.30, to be out the house by 6. And I didn't get until 11.30 at night. I had an, all I'd eaten all day was a McDonald's. And that was on the go because we hadn't, me and my colleague was kept going all day. They kept phoning up saying, can you do this job? We we'll need you to go here, we we'll need you to go there. We didn't get home till, I don't know what time she got home. I didn't get into half eleven. She dropped me off. And she only lived down the road really for me. So she probably got in about, just gone half eleven. And I said to her the next day, I said, we cannot do that again. She said, I'm not. I said, I've already told the office we're not doing that again. She said, so have I. You know what I mean? That was ridiculous. I don't mind working, but when you're working from, when you're on the go from 6 a.m. in the morning and you're going out when it's dark, you're walking down the roads when it's dark to meet up with your colleague, and then you're coming back when it's dark. It's not no joke. No joke at all. Anyway. Forget about me and what I used to do. We are going to watch, because I didn't realise there's another part of an interview until last night. I thought, oh, sugar, I didn't realise that was there. So I stopped it last night. And that's on part two. Well, if you haven't seen that, please go and watch it. Um, so I stopped it, and we're going to watch that one tonight and also go over the records. The documents that I've got, which I sat here last night patiently going over every word that should not be in there. Every name, every address, everything. And I'm thinking these names shouldn't be in here. All these names of these um, witnesses and people who've gave out uh, p statements, they should not be in this. Be highlighted like that. So I've gone through and took every name. And now I'm going through all my other documents, slowly. But I can do most of that this weekend, some of that this weekend. I will not be on live now until Sunday evening. Because I have my grandson tomorrow night. Then on Saturday, we pick my granddaughter up and she's job Saturday night. So I've got my grandkids this weekend. Take them home Sunday. Then I'll be back to clean the house up that they trash. And... Try and sort some out for I'm here. I may be on Sunday night, it all depends. If I get what I want done over the weekend, if I can get my documents sorted out, I'll be on Sunday night. If not, it'll be Monday night. Anyway, so without further ado, oh, I've got to put a light on. I've got to put a light on. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to watch a video now that I've got all ready. Just got to get it up on the screen for you. Uh, put me down there. Uh, let's go back to this. I don't think it's very long. It's only about... One minute. It's only about 25, 26 minutes long. Okay, so we're going to listen to this. Because all these interviews are actually in the documents that, we're going, that I'm going to as well. But it's just interesting to listen to the interviews because... 
they contradicting each other. And this one, I don't know if anyone has seen that one, that other interview by Jen, the latest audio interview, please audio interview. Oh, how she can turn the waterworks on and off. Yep. I'm going to see if I can get it. <laughs> or at least work some out so I can edit out what I need and just keep what I need. But credit the YouTuber, whoever I take it off. So, what time, where are we now? We're at 18.45. So, right, I'm making... I'm writing down the time so that I can put it in the description. So then if there's any bits you don't want to listen to or see, you can just skip it back past it, okay? If I've got time, I'm going to do a bit of mapping with you. Like where, like with the times I gave us yesterday, I'm going to go over them with you. The routes. Because I tell you, it's all over the place. It really is. So... Let's get on with this interview. There we go. Yes. Case number 24 11313. Today's date is uh, February 28th, 2024. The time is 0069. Here goes, and the date is oh, not a gang. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not a gang. Now we're speaking with Stefan again. I would like to go again. So, as you guys know, they have, right? Mm -hmm. They've been going through the phone and they noticed that there was like a lot of messages between you and. Um, can you explain to me what your relationship is between. Yeah. This is when they're uh, talking about information we don't... Um, mostly things like, when are you going to call us? When are you going to come up here and visit? Hey, poopy head, get online. Things like that. Okay. Um, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Your phone. I told you that I was going to um, hold on to it and that we would like to download your phone, right? Okay. Is this something that I have your consent to do or do I need to get a search warrant for your phone? Uh, it should be fine. You're okay with us going through your phone? Yeah. Okay. Can I have the pin to your phone? Uh, of course it should be fine because he did a, what was it he called? What did I call it again? Where he cleared all his phone. But he didn't just do it once. He did it once on the Monday morning. Then he did it again on the Monday evening. At midnight. He did it twice. So, yeah, of course you can have my phone. There's nothing on my phone. Forgetting, idiot. They can go back on your phone. Uh, 4256 <clears throat> okay. Right, so while giving his consent, they didn't have to go and get a warrant. Right. And he's got no fault now. He can't argue against it. Because he thinks he's in the all clear. Whatever head you have got on your shoulders. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then, okay, so when you guys FaceTime, what do you guys talk about? Um, there too. We're just chatting. Okay. Um... I noticed that at some some of the times that you guys are FaceTiming, it's like really late. Is it normal for her mm -hmm. to be in bed at eight? Yeah. 
Okay. And her bedtime is around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Uh, I talk to them both before bedtime when I'm not here. Okay. 10, 30 is supposed to be her bedtime, but she, she gets to push it sometimes. Okay. When you guys are FaceTiming. Okay. Sometimes phone to FaceTime with her, sometimes FaceTiming them both together on one of the phones. Okay. And then yet you said that yesterday you accidentally factory reset your phone, correct? Factory, factory yeah. reset. Okay. Well, do you remember what time that was? Uh, no, it was sometime in the morning. I had been pushing off doing an update for a while. Was, was that before or after you went to the smoke shop? Uh, before? I'm not sure. I'm not a morning person. Um, Dedicated to phone. Uh, I was doing this update. It had some sort of weird option at the bottom that said something about reinstall everything, and I I, don't, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Okay, can you uh, explain right to me? Um, where were you? Like, were you in your settings? Uh, I was following whatever the links were for the the OS update. Where I don't have an Android, so I don't know where. I'm, you... I'm not super text. Is it like so a sorry. text? Was it? it? It was. It was a push notification that came in at the top that I had just right. been ignoring. Oh, like up here. Time. Yeah. Okay. And then I just. It was. It was a. It's a phone headed maneuver. Okay, and then where did it direct you to? I don't know. It took me to a page with with all the stuff in the system and. I clicked something. I I wasn't paying attention. Do you remember what it said? Like, what kind of update was it? Uh, it was it was like a big OS update, and it had all these options. And it, it was like reinstall reinstall something with mm -hmm. all the apps and stuff. Reinstall all everything, the apps and stuff. I. I don't know exactly what I said. I pushed it, and it started doing the update, and then something, it turned into some sort of reset or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I did that. Okay. I was half asleep. And and then when you came back to get your key fob, what did you do when you got here? Ran inside, got the key fob, ran back out again. Okay, where did you park? Uh, right, right up here, I think. Okay. How long would you say you were inside your apartment for? Mm, literally long enough to run in, grab the fob, and, and come back out. So. Okay, and then what did you do? The most. What did you do when you came back out? Uh, got back in the car and went back on, went back on uh, the morning mission. Okay. The camera has you in the complex for twelve minutes. Mm -hmm. Does that seem about right? Yeah, coming into the complex, driving around, parking, getting the fob, coming back out. Sounds about right. Okay. And then you leave. What time would you say you dropped her off at the school? Or not at the school, but in the area? My estimate was sometime between 8.20 and 8.40. Um, okay, you, the camera has you leaving the complex at 8.31. 8.31, okay, so it must have been closer to 8.40 then. Okay, and then after you dropped her off, did you go directly to the smoke shop? I did, I went directly to the smoke shop, um, waited, it was supposed to be open, but it wasn't. Um, I waited a little while to see if they were just being slow about turning on the open sign. They weren't, so I went home at that point. How long do you think you waited? <clears throat> Five, ten minutes maybe. Okay, so if you drop her off at like 8.40, how far is a smoke shop from there to where you dropped her off? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how many minutes. How far. Did you go anywhere else after the smoke shop? Um, sorry. I don't know. I don't think I went anywhere specific. I was just driving probably in the direction of home. But I don't remember stopping anywhere specifically. And you were there for five to ten minutes? Roundabout, I think. 
Okay, so like let's say you drop her off at 840. We don't see your car coming back south until 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing between 8.40 and 10 o'clock? Um, cruising around a little bit. Uh, okay, but I asked you earlier, you know, like what you were doing, and yeah. you said you were there for like five or ten minutes, and then you came back home. Yeah, well, I went to the smoke shop. See here, they are trying to pin down the times, right? Because they've got long gaps. They've got long gaps between when he dropped her off and when they see him going back home. And they're trying to pin down where he went. Well, they know where he went by now. They know this. Right? They know. Right? At 901, he was driving north on International Drive at Central Florida Parkway. Then, what, 20, 35 minutes, 34 minutes later, he was seen in the parking garage of 9271 South John Young Parkway, second level, northeast corner of lot. lot. 941, Stefan is seen placing Maggie in the boot. 10 14 hours enters Venetian Bay, East Gate of Complex. 10 54 hours, Stefan throws more trash. Now we know the one housemate said that she seen Stefan that morning and he was in and out, up and down the stairs, in and out all the time. Right, and that's what he's doing. He's getting stuff and moving it and hiding it and getting rid of it. You know what I mean? So that's where they're trying to pin him down. Because they know where he's been. But there's like a driving off on International Drive to, and then parking garage. It's like a 20, 35 minute, 34 minute time difference. Where was it? What was he doing between 901 and 935? Because I've looked on the maps and it's not that far from each of them. Those two places. They're really not. They're literally on each of his doorstep. So they're trying to pin him down. And what he's saying is not matching up with what they know. Like I said. Um, but I was probably, I may have been meandering around the area. But I made my way home. Okay, but I'm asking you earlier, right? And even like the first time we talked to you, you're not telling us that you're like, you know, just cruising the area, like you're coming home. So I need to be able to explain to my supervisors why there's such a time gap. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. It was just a normal day. I didn't have anything important to do. The smoke shop was supposed to open soon, so I made my way over there. Wasn't any particular rush though. Okay, but can you help me explain to them? Because I don't know the explanation or the answer to this question. Okay, so can you help me explain to them why there's such a delay in the time? No, can't explain it. I wasn't going anywhere in particular. I wasn't doing anything in particular. Just making my way to the smoke shop. Waited for them to open. They did not open, and then I left. Where did you go from there? From the smoke shop, mm -hmm. I went home. Okay, the smoke shop is like 10 minutes from here, right? 15, 20-ish, 15, 20-ish, something like that. Earlier, you told us it was 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Time is not a strong suit of mine. I'm, I'm guesstimating here. I'm I understand. You notice when they pick him up on anything, on the times, he goes, times aren't a strong point of mine. I'm not a morning person. My head's all over the place. You know what I mean? I'm not a morning person. Seriously, I'm not. Right? I get, I, if I go before my body is ready to get up, like when I come out of that drowsiness, which is normally between 9 and 10 a.m., that's when my body starts to wake up on its own. But if I'm, if I'm forced up, 
So I've got to get up before by 8 a.m. Well, I've got to be out the house by 8 a.m. And I've got to be up by I've got to be up by 7 6 30. Because I know it takes me. I've got to come in, sit, get myself a cup of coffee, drink them, then about seven o'clock, go and get a wash, do my hair, get dressed. So I can be out the house for eight o'clock. I can, and then it's like, don't fucking talk to me. It's like, just don't talk to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do not talk to me in the mornings. Which isn't good when you've got grandchildren who are waking you up at seven. Now, my grandson is very good. He understands now, right, because of my medication. So he'll just go, can I have my laptop, my tablet? And I'll go, yeah, it's free. And I'll unplug it. And he'll, oh, he'll come round and unplug it. And he'll either go sit in my bed or go back in his bed watching it. And I'm not fully asleep. I'm half and half, so I can hear where, what he's doing. I can hear when he goes into the living room or when he's back in the bedroom. And then normally about, if he wakes up about, say, seven, I'm normally up by half seven, right? But he knows, like, I've got to have my coffee first. He knows that. So then about eight o'clock, I'll get up and I'll, and I'll go, do you want your breakfast now? And he'll go, yes, please. What do you want? Because it's for saying, he'll tell me what he wants, so I'll give him his breakfast thing. And then he leaves, he goes away again, and he's happy, I'm happy. But when I've got my granddaughter, it's like, want this, want that, do this, do that, granny this, granny that. I'm like, oh, it's too early for all this, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? But she'll get to the age where she'll understand granny is not a morning person. I tell you something, my kids even brought me a sweatshirt, part of my Christmas present the other year. And I've got it hanging up and it says something like, I'm done, I'm done. I'll get it now. Ugh. All right, it says... Touch my coffee, I will slap you so hard, even Google won't be able to find you. Now, I have this argument with the cats every morning. Because whenever I sit down to have my coffee in the morning, they're coming up nudging me. Leave me alone. Let me have my coffee. Anyway, so I'm not a morning person, but I'll tell you now, if something like this had happened, I'd know exactly where I was. And within a few minutes of some, say five minutes or so of something, I'll be able to say, well, I was at this shop about 10, 10 past five, or I dropped them off at this time, then I was up at this shop by this time, and I was here at this time. Perhaps not directly on the time, but five minutes either way, I'd be able to tell them where, where I was. Yeah, but I have to be able to explain you know, where you were for an hour and 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And right now, I can't explain that. Okay. Smoke shop was supposed to open close to 10. I waited. They did not open. And I came home. Okay. What time specifically was supposed to open? Uh, 10 o'clock is this when it's supposed to open. So why'd you go at 840? Uh... Like I said, I didn't go exactly at eight forty. I went to the smoke shop after I dropped her off. But, but even if yeah, but even if you, oh, this dog's gonna say no. Even if you went after you dropped her off at eight forty and you got there at say five to nine, nine o'clock, you're still an hour early. You know what I mean? You think oh, I'm way too early to go to the vape, vape shop? I'll go home first, or. I'll go and do some other errands first. I'll go to this shop and I'll get this and I'll do that and I'll do this. Then I'll come back and get my vibe and then I'll go home. You know what I mean? So none of what he says makes sense. If it was 9 o'clock, that still would have been an hour before they're supposed to open. Mm -hmm. So why would you think it would be open? I didn't think it would be open. I was hoping I would get there early enough and wait for it to open. So you would have waited an hour for it to be open? 
I did not wait an hour. I got there maybe 20, 20 minutes before it opened, 15 minutes before it opened, and just sat and waited. But then you're seen coming at 10 a.m. when it's supposed to open, already coming down. It, it just... Leaving, because it was supposed to open at 10 a.m. I waited a few minutes after 10. They were not opening, and that's when I, I left. You, you did not wait two minutes, a few minutes after 10. What, what do you mean? At 10 a.m., you were seen coming down southbound on Zhang Yong Parkway at the intersection of Zhang Yong Parkway. At 10 a.m., I was still in front of that shop waiting to see if they were going to turn on the open sign. Okay, but if you drop at 8. 40 and you said you only waited for a couple minutes at the smoke shop why would you still be there at 10 i waited to see if it would open and they did not open we, we got that part yeah and i got that call a couple of minutes mm -hmm. but and then you said you were there after a couple minutes after 10 so that that's it yeah, doesn't make it doesn't sense, sense. Uh, i apologize for that um I'm, trying to help you out the best that I can, but I just... Right, so like, if you drop her off around 840, let's say, give or take 10 minutes, you make it to the shop around 9, the smoke shop, and you sit there and wait for a couple minutes for it to open, you said you waited for maybe 5 or 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Does it make sense that you're still there at 10 o'clock? I was there at 10 o'clock. Okay, so what did you do before that? I dropped her off, and I made my way over. Not a direct route, but I made my way over there. Did you stop anywhere on your way to the smoke shop? I don't, I don't think so. Do you have um, problems with your memory that you can't recall what yes, you did? Um, I'm extremely ADHD. I'm sorry. Um, so just details start to get fuzzy after a while even the times i'm giving you are my best guesstimates here um, i didn't have my phone with me at the time so i wasn't aware of exactly what time there's no time on your car transpiring there probably is but it's not my car it's my parents car how certain were are you that you were outside of the smoke shop at 10 a.m 90 percent sure what makes you think that you were there at 10? Um, I saw lights on inside the place. Um, it looked like they were coming to life in there. Mm -hmm. So it looked like they were about to open. Mm -hmm. um, and I was waiting to see if they were going to turn on the open. Do you remember who, if there was anybody inside? Uh, I couldn't see inside from the outside. But after I came home and then went back to the smoke shop again later, uh, when they definitely were open, uh, I stopped in and got my vape juice, finally. Um, I don't remember the name of the guy working there, but um, he was like a skinny guy. Uh, short, skinny guy. Um, when you came back for the fob, did she go inside with you? No, she was in the car still. She was asleep. Where in the car? Passenger seat. The front seat? Correct. Okay. Did she at any point go in the back of the vehicle, like in the back seat? No. So she was in the front the whole time? Mm -hmm. Awake or asleep? She was asleep. Okay. She was calm down. We had gotten up. Early. How was she positioned in the front seat? Um, lean back in the seat. Just kind of conked out and happened. Where was her head in relation to the seat? Um, against the seat, I think. Against it. Just... Was the seat leaning back? Or... The seat was leaning back. Yeah, she had leaned the seat back so that she could reclining okay and then i need you to try to you know refresh your memory when you got the flat tire on 192 mm -hmm. what could you see around you uh, it's 192 it all looks the same um I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm drawing a blank as any specific businesses or names. Did you pull off to the side of the road to a business? Uh, I pulled off into a side plaza, like one of those little strips along the side. Um, dug around for my, my spare and my jack. Thankfully, 
We had both. What direction were you coming in? I was going towards um, towards John Young. Okay. So that direction. Mm-hmm. And it was a plaza. You, you don't remember any businesses that were in the plaza? I don't. I was focused what, on the... What color is the plaza? Oh, God. I, I have no idea what color the plaza was. I'm sorry. I didn't, didn't even register a detail like that. Okay. Remind me again what you were doing in one, on 192? Uh, I was looking around at different game shops. Uh, one of my card games uh, just had a release on Friday, Lorcana. What, what card are you talking about? Uh, it's uh, It's like a trading card game. And they had a big release on Friday, so I wanted to go around. What's and see. the card, though? I'm sorry. What is the game? Uh, it's called Lorcana. Lorcana? Yeah, L O R C A N A. It's a trading card game made by Disney, uh, kind of like Pokemon cards or Magic the Gathering. Okay, and you stopped at what shop? Uh, I stopped over by Target. I was going to see if they had any. Uh, I then went up. You know, it's nice. It keeps. Stopping him from going into all this mumble jumble word salad that he does. Right? He just goes on and on and on, and she's stopping him, and she goes, So, what time is it? Things like that. Up and was going to go to a place called House Rules Games, um, that is on 192 and Oak Street. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not make it to House Rules Games because I got a flat tire. Okay, which that. target did you go to? Uh, the one down on 192. 192 and what? Uh, is there more than one down there? I don't know. I'm not familiar no. with the area. Oh, uh, it's 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 the one down there by the Walmart. I think. I'm not sure what the cross streets are. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry. I wish I could be more help. I'm so sorry. And how long will you change your entire foot? Um, I'm not sure how long it took. Um, I got back here by like 2.35, 2.40, um, because I was trying to get home to go with her to go to school. Um, And we needed to leave by 2.30, the flat tire. Made me late for that. Okay. Um, and there is absolutely nothing that you can remember about the plaza that you got the flat. No, I don't remember color. I mean, it's all just kind of brownish, I think, along there. And you said when. You got your flat, you were heading towards JYP from 192. Yes. Okay, where's your um, flat tire at? Uh, it's in the trunk. Okay. Um, I've got the spare on there right now. Yeah, I saw the spare. Um, I don't think I have anything else. It's my um, phone number. Mm-hmm. If you can remember... Where you got your flat tire, um, just have her send me a text message, okay? Okay. Um, I'm so sorry. That's I know, okay. I know the details are important, and just the way our brains work with ADHD is those things can get fuzzy. Yeah. Are you on any medication? Uh, I'm supposed to be. I have not been medicated lately. So okay. I'm just, I'm not a morning person. I'm, not, I'm very time blind on the best of days. And forgetful. So I understand that none of that is helpful in this case. Okay. I'm pretty sorry. Um, I explained that we're gonna have the apartment um secured for the rest of the night. Okay. Why? Um. So the investigation is not gonna happen tonight. It is. So, okay. just so I, I explained. I'm going to get playing up. Hold on, let's just stop it a minute and then...
Try again. Yes, my internet's playing up. Right, well, right, until my internet comes back, well. But it's not showing anything, it's showing my internet is fine here. So, again, there's something dis disrupting it, I don't know. I've stopped it at the moment, so. But, this is at the end of the interview anyway, so. But I love how they was pressing him on his timing. That, that time between... 8.40, right, and when he was seen re-entering the Venetian Bay place at 10.14 hours, right, so for 8.40 to 9.40, 40 that's an hour and 35 minutes, 35, 40 minutes, yeah. So they're pressuring him because they know where he was. They've got it already. They know at 9.01 he was driving north on International Drive and Central Park. Right, and what I'll do is I'm going to take this off because that was the end of the interview. And I will actually go onto Google Maps, right? And uh, we'll have a quick look on Google Maps at these places I said he was. Right. I tried pinging it, but it won't let me. I can't, for some reason, it just won't let me ping anything. I don't know why. I don't know what I'm doing wrong and what I'm not doing. So, right. Magdalene's home, there, right? At 7.30, he was seen here, at the bins, right? Then at, what did I say before that, 7.30? Oh no, 7.30 he was seen at the bins. Then, I don't know where he was from 7.30 to, right? It didn't say. But at 8.19, 8.19, he enters here. Right, let's get in a bit closer. He comes in here. Right? He then comes through. And I don't know which way he would go. He'd go up this way and along, around, right? That's the more direct route. So at 8.19, he enters the Venetian bag. At 8.31, he leaves. Maggie's still in car. Bit brazen, wasn't he, coming in that main gate with Maggie sitting in the front seat? How do you think that? Security guy feels now knowing that that young girl, when he's seen her sitting in that front seat, that what he thought was asleep, was actually not asleep. Right, he leaves there, and at 9 01, he's seen um, driving north on international. So there's a bit of a gap between 8 31 and 9 01. So there's another 30 minute gap where he's seen driving along, where was he? International Drive. Drive. Um, and Central Florida. And Central Florida. 
Why? Silly so complex at eight. Seen leaving again at eight thirty one. Maggie's still in the car. At nine oh one, he's seen driving off on International Drive and in Central Florida. International Drive. Where's Central Florida? Did come up for me earlier. Here. So he's obviously caught on cameras here. Right, because he's coming either this, I don't know if he's north, north that way. Is that where the red is pointing north is up? I think so. Right. He's going headed north. Yeah. At 0935, he was seen at... Oh, come on. Come on. He was seen at two nine nine two seven one right here so we'll get directions from nine two seven one from uh international drive and it isn't a long drive and Right. It is not a long, it looks a long ride, but it isn't. Right. So he's caught on camera there. He could either go that way. But it said he was heading north. So I should imagine he'd go that way. Yeah. And along up to there. He went to the second level. Of that place, and I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see what I mean. Where are we? Zoom out, Angie. Oh, there we are. Oh. Right, so he was seeing. South John Young Parkway, here, on the second floor, it was caught on camera. Second level, north is Kong of Lot. So if we're north here, so he's going to be over this, north is, yeah, he's going to be over this way. So he's going to be over this way somewhere. Yep. If I've got my north and south as well, it's going to be over that way. And then... 9.41, Stefan is seen placing Maggie, taking Maggie from the front passenger seat and putting her body in the boot. Then from there, right, it went from, let's put that there a minute, and get rid of this. From there, it says it's got, it enters Venetian Bay, which is Maggie's home. Um, let's look. Maggie's home, right? So it goes from there. Come on, give me the maps. All the way back down here then. Right, all the way back down here. Down here, right down here, to that, right? Now, I believe after he went in that first time through the main entrance, he went in and out the back entrance every time after that. He was not seen leaving via the main entrance again after that first time. 
So after his first scene at eight nineteen. Right, or seven, whatever time I've seen him leave. I think I've seen him got him on camera leaving at 7.30 something. Right, but when they see him, after that 8.19 one, where they've got him on that camera coming through the gates at the main entrance, he's not seen again coming through the main entrance. So, it comes all the way down here, which is what? How long is that? Oh, is it going to give me time? How long does it take? Where are we going? Ah, uh, but it comes all the way down here to here, right? Let's go in a bit closer. Why is I keep losing where I am when I'm going too close? Yeah. Right. Oh. And forget these bits here. He come all the way down here, and he's gone in the back entrance, back to the house. Right, 10.54 hours, he was seen again at these trash bins. So, 5 to 11, he was seen again at these trash bins. That would coincide with what the housemate was saying, how he was in and out of the house all morning, up the stairs, down the stairs, and whatever, right? And then, at th let me jump a bit, because at 1360 he's seen on Old Hickory Tree Road, passes Hickory Tree Elementary at 317, they've got him on camera, heading west, Highway 192 from Old Hickory Road, now has spare tyre and rear drive, side, rear drive side. So now he's heading back, because he's now got the spare wheel on his car. 1521 is once again a scene at these bins throwing items in dumpster. Right? Then we take a big jump again and we go to 038 hours and we'll look at all that at another time because that's where it's going out onto Old Hickory Road. I just wanted to literally show you where he was going. From one place to another, right? So they know where he'd been from the seven thirty when you were seen at the trash bins, right? Up until ten fourteen hours. But he's trying to say that he went to the e smoker online vape shop and sat there. But he didn't. And you can't tell him what he did between the 9 o'clock and getting back at 10.14. So it's an hour and 14, well, if he was at that shop for, five, say, 5 to 9, 9 o'clock, it wasn't open. It doesn't open till 10 a.m. So he's come home. So what happened in that hour and 14 minutes? We know what happened. Because he didn't go to the vape shop. He went to the parking garage and 9271 South John Young Parkway, second level, and then comes home. Right? And then he's so brazen. He sits in that house knowing Maddie is in the boot of his car. Right? Until he leaves again. At whatever time he left. But they've got his car at 13, 16 hours. But we know he left before then. 
We know we left before 13, 16 hours because Jen said she got back about 11.15ish, 11.30ish. He was there. He left about 12-ish, 12 12.15ish, 12 between 12 and 12.15. Said he'd be back by half two. He wasn't. So, there's just so much back and forth on his thing, right? I forgot to put the time down on the top, that's my time. Okay. Right, so, there's still a lot to go through on the mapping. I'm still working on the mapping because I'm not some, like some people who know how to work this map system and ping it and whatever and put markers on it. I'm not. I was trying to get markers put on where these entrances were down here to say what times it come in and left and all this lot. But it wasn't letting me and I don't know how I can put a marker there. So if there's anyone who can help me who knows how to put a marker on a Google map, like, yeah, I'll show you. Like, let's get rid of all this at the moment. Let's get rid of that. All right. I want to have a marker put here. Here. But whenever I click there, it's, it goes to directions here, what's here, search nearby, print, add a missing place. But to do that, then, it's got to get authorised by six, six, so no. That isn't what I want. Right? I just want to be able to say 8.35 or 9.35, whatever. He returns. 9.12.15, he leaves and things like that. But I, I just don't know how to work it out. How to get the little... You know what I mean? I can do, it on, like, if there's an item there, a building, like here. Right? Not the trash bins. There's the trash bins. I was able to put a marker there. And I was able to put one on Madeline's home. And I think I've got one on where the grandmother lives, uh, works. Sorry, where the works. I'm not sure if I've got one on where the grandmother lives yet, right? But I was trying to get it all on these other little places like him coming and going, but I just can't. It just won't let me do it. So, if anyone can help me there, I'll be most grateful. If you're watching this on replay and you know how to put little markers on a map, like little pins, Right, just to say a time and whatever. Let me know, please. Right. So let's have a look. What's this? Uh, right. Okay, we'll close that. Oh, there's heavy traffic in that area. Typical conditions, apparently. Anyway, so that is just part of the map. And I'm, as I said, I'd really like some info on how to put a little ping here. And here. And at the junctions and things like that. You know what I mean? But I just don't know. It won't let me. I've tried everything. It must not let me do anything. I might try Google Earth. See if I can get anything on there. Do anything on there. Ooh. Ooh. I think there's an argument going on outside. Hold on. Hold on. I'm nosy. I'm going to have a look.
So I have to shut my door when I open my window wide because my cats will jump up and out. And I'm very high up. Well, I can't see anything outside, so it may be from another flat, and they've probably got the windows open. I remember once, it was like two o'clock in the morning, half one, two o'clock. No, about one o'clock, so in the morning, and I heard these two girls arguing outside, because there's like a, a lovely little play area for the kids, it's really nice. Walk out my block door, it's right there, it's a little play area, it's brilliant. My grandson loves, loves me to take him there, and my granddaughter does, right? Anyway, so one night I'm lying in bed, I'm trying to get to sleep, and these two girls are arguing, and I heard this one girl go, I'm going to go in that block, go to the top floor and jump, right? Well, by now, I take enough of them arguing, and they're screaming, and they're shouting, I felt like saying, I felt like going to the window and saying, Buzz, this flat number, I will let you in and you can jump as long as you shut the feck up. Because I'm thinking, all I want is sleep. You know what I mean? And you got these two idiots pickering about whatever it was I was moaning about. Probably some of, of no, can't, oh. Anyway, we are now going to go. <laughs> To the documents. We are now, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the time that I'm doing it so that I can put it all down when I do my. So, uh, what are we at? One. Eleven, I'll say. Eleven. One. Documents. Now, like I said, last night, poor cats, all I wanted to do was go to bed. And I was on a, I was a woman on a mission last night to get this document stuck, sorted, or everything marked off, every little name, every little number, age, date, phone number, everything was marked off. Let's just check them for me. Right, so... We read this bit last night, right? And now it gets to the point where they're going to Yolanda, like the grandmother. The last time she saw Madeline was the night of the 2nd of 25th, 2024. That was day of the party. I tell her, see, they had her address and everything. I'm thinking, no, we, we know her name. We don't need to know her address, even though I've written it down so I can mark it on my map. <laughs> right? At her home. This is where Madeline's birthday party was held. It is not uncommon for Madeline to sometimes walk from Hunters Creek Middle School to Yolanda's, Yolanda's office. Well, I know where that is. I have pinned her office, so we can look at that as well. On the 2nd of 26, 2024, Jennifer called Yolanda and asked if Madeline walked to her office because she was not currently at school. Yolanda stayed, stayed Madeline was taken, Madeline was taken to school. Oh yeah. Yolanda stayed, Madeline was taken to school by Stefan, whom, is, whom she knows as Jennifer's ex-boyfriend. Right, he was her ex. Yolanda believes Jennifer and Stefan broke up in December, which they did when he moved out of the home, but she wasn't sure why they broke up. Yolanda stated Stefan, Stefan possibly came to kiss me for Madeline's birthday. Stefan has taken Madeline to school in the past and stated he dropped her off 
a nearby apartment complex named Urbana. I've written that down because I want to map that as well. Madeline has never run away from home in the past. Approximately one year ago, there was an incident where Madeline was upset due to having an argument with her mother, and she called Yolanda. At that time, Madeline explained she was walking around the neighbourhood due to being angry. However, she soon went back home after being told to do so by Yolanda. Yolanda states she doesn't like Stefan because he doesn't do anything, as in working. Said Jennifer doesn't want to be alone. And that's just selfishness. That is just pure selfishness. You know what I mean? Right. Detective Tagler with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, who also asked to assist with interviewing, was also asked to assist in interviews Stefan during the case. Detective Tagler would eventually become the lead investigator for the Orange County Sheriff's Office case. Detective Tagler contacted Stefan at 4012. I've left that address in because everyone knows that address. Detective Tagler was provided locations where Stefan vehicle 2010 Silver Lincoln MKZ bearing FL tag IYLL82 had been seen during the time Stefan stated he dropped off Madeline at school. So they already knew I said that, didn't I? Right? Detective Tagler confronted Stephen about his locations during the interview, which we just heard. But Tagler, but Stefan would provide answers that did not match up to his vehicle location. This raised concerns with Detective Tagler, as if Stefan was withholding information. Stefan provided consent to search his phone. However, he stated he had accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone. On the 2nd of 26, 2024, Detective Tagler asked Stefan a second time if he consented. Oh, I wish they'd shut. Sounds like living a flat. It's that time of year, we'll get all that. Right, and um, Tagler asked Stefan a second time if he's consented to, to the download of his phone. And he agreed and provoked, provided his passcode. Detective Tagler gave Stefan procedure to the then proceeded to the security gate at Fishing Bay to review the video. From reviewing the security video, Detective Tagler observed Stefan's vehicle exiting the vehicle complex with a female wearing a green sweater in the front passenger seat. The female was slumped over to the left. We see, which is an abnormal way for a person to be seated in a vehicle. At that point, Detective Tagler decided, decided to secure the residence at 4012 Santa Maria Drive for a search warrant. Right? <clears throat> right? The Kissimmee Police Department was notified and asked to assist with this case. Detective Smallwood responded to assist Orange County in the search. The decision was made to have patrol officers from the Kissimmee Police Department secure the location for the search warrant to be ex- executed on the 2nd of 28th, 2024. Right? On February 28th, 2024, I, Detective Mark, was called, asked, called and asked to respond to, to the address to assist Orange County in executing the search warrant for missing for their missing person case. Upon arrival, I contacted OC deputies who were waiting for their forensics unit to arrive to execute the search warrant. While Orange County was serving a search warrant on the premises, a subsequent search warrant was executed on Stefan's cellular phone. Right, now, that was so that they could go further back on his phone to get all that Deleted evidence. They needed the search warrant to get that, I should imagine. He'd already given her permission to look at his phone, but they needed, I suppose, a search warrant to get the other information. Upon reviewing the contents of Stephen, Stephen's phone, it was 
discovered several images reside in a Google Drive, a separate search one reserved to Google. And upon the receipt of the contents of Stefan's Google Drive, several images and videos were located, which depicted an apparent child, which he opening at, as a focal point of the pictures slash videos. There were also pictures and videos depicting an apparent child, the child would later identify it as. During this time, it was also discovered Stefan did not drop Madeline off school as he previously stated. Orange County detectives were able to gather information from license plate readers, traffic cameras. This information confirmed that Steph- Stefan did not drop Madeline off at school. In fact, his vehicle was seen driving south on Old Hickory Road on 2nd 26th, 2024. Yeah, we know. Corporal Ilgen and I drove out to the area of Old Hickory Tree Road to canvas the area for possible spots where Stefan may have dumped Madeline's body. We searched different places, however, the results were negative. We also contacted staff at Hickory Tree Elementary to review the surveillance video because obviously the car would go past that, could go past that way. Deputy Chisholm. Now, when I read that, I thought Chisholm. Didn't I, didn't, wasn't there uh, the CSI? His name was Chisholm. With the Osseo County Sheriff's Office, was able to assist in watching the video. On 2nd 26, 2024, at approximately 13 17 hours, a vehicle matching Stevens is seen travelling south on Old Hickory Road, passing the school. Based upon the suspicious nature of Madeline going missing, it was decided that I become the lead investigator from the Kissimmee Police Department. Right. So, um... Mm-hmm. Due to this investi- investigation being worked by two different agencies, it was decided to have the command centre to be housed at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Deputies had already arranged for Jennifer and Stephen to be transported there for a press conference. Yeah. I was shown the content and we listened to those interviews. We haven't had the interview where Stephen's in that car being transported to the press conference. There's got to be that video audio out there of Stephen when he was being transported to that press conference of what he was saying. I'd already arranged from. I was shown the contents of Stefan's Google Group where one folder that appeared dedicated to contained over 1,700 files. Majority of these photographs and videos showed different, oh, I forgot that word, positions based upon these images. Right, I'm just going to do it now. Because I was having to go over it and over it last night. It wasn't so easy. I was, you know what I mean? I thought, well, there's got to be an easy way to black this out. I haven't got no black on it. I could go into the drawer, right? But then it's too, it's not so even. So I thought, no, I'll just stick it to this, right? It was. Got through it pretty quick. Right. Based upon these images, Orange County detectives began to author an arrest warrant for Stefan due to the fact that most of these images appear to have occurred. Location, probable cause was provided to Detective Moore, the Kissimmee Police Detective wrote, Detective wrote the arrest warrant charging Stefan and with and possession of child corn. Okay. Right, let's just have a look. I was also provided with information from license plate readers, surveillance videos and traffic cameras. On February 26, 2024, at 0730, Steve, oh, excuse me, this. Oh, give me this. I miss this beginning, I am. 
right, put here. At seven thirty hours. Oh, did I? Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, I've seen that one. I'm gonna forgot to write that down. Thing up zero seven thirty hours. Driving is uh dumpster. I'll just put dumpster. Right. Information by Stephen is wearing a red shirt and tan pants. Stephen exits the vehicle and throws away two large white trash bags. Now, if you remember, right. As I kept saying in those videos I've done before, keep in mind the red shirt, right? Because on the initial contact videos, when the police first made contact with the family, he's wearing like a bluish top and a red shirt with a logo on was found in the top drawer in bedroom four. And yet he stands there in that interview and says, I haven't eaten, I haven't showered since whenever. Well, you've obviously changed your top, mate. Steve, Stephen exits the vehicle and throws away two large white trash bags. In the passenger seat of Stephen's vehicle is a white female wearing a green sweatshirt with her head slumped over to the left. The positioning of this female does not appear to be normal and she doesn't move while Stephen is ex exiting or entering the vehicle. The female appears to be Madeline. On February 26, 2024, 08, 10 hours, Stefan is driving south. So, I forgot the one. Ah, I forgot this one then. So, 08, 10 hours. Stefan is driving south. South. I'm John, John Young. Parkway approaching approaching Thacker Avenue. Right, Madeline is still in the front passenger seat in the same position. At 8 19 hours, Stephen enters Venetian Bay. I've got that, yeah, I've got all this now. Right, and exits, that's when he said he didn't have his, fault, his clicker. But if anyone remembers, if you haven't seen him, go back into my playlist. On your the playlist will go up at the end and it'll be round about an hour. An hour maybe an hour round about the one hour, one and a half hour mark that you'll see it come up on the top of the screen. And it'll just be Madeline Soto. Click on that and it'll give you all the videos. Go and watch the one where it's about the security guard and I think it was and was it the security guard, the grandmother, the grandfather and the aunt? Go and watch that one and listen particularly to the first one, which is the security guard. Right. Stefan enters Venetian Bay and exits the rear of the complex at 8, 31 hours. Madeline is still in the front passenger seat in the same position. On February 26th, at 091 hours, Stephen is driving on International Drive and Central Florida Parkway. Madeline is still in the front of the car. This confirms that Stefan did not drop Madeline off at Ongir School as he previously stated. No. Right? On February 26, 2024, at 9.30 hours, Stefan is driving into the parking garage of 9271 South Young Parkway. Stephen drives up to the second level and parks near the northeast corner of the lot. Stephen backs his vehicle into his parking space by the stairs. Stephen exits his vehicle and walks towards the rear of his vehicle and opens the trunk. At 09.41 hours, Stephen is seen placing Madeline 
who is wearing a green sweatshirt and blue pants in the trunk of his vehicle. Stephen then exits the parking garage. At 10.14 hours, Stefan enters the Venetian Bay for the east gate of the complex. Magdalene is no longer seen in the front seat of the vehicle, no, she's in the boot. 10.54 hours, Stefan is seen driving to the dumpster in the Venetian Bay throwing away more trash. Hold on, I've got to let my cat in. Anyway, so uh, where was we? Magdalene is no longer seen in the front passenger seat of his vehicle. At ten fifty four hours, Stephen is seen driving to the dumpster in Venetia Bay, throwing away more trash. Have I got that one? Okay, did you know? Yeah. Right. At eleven twenty two hours I forgot that one, I haven't got that one if I I think I stopped then, didn't you know I stop think that, didn't I? Know? Yeah, I did. Right, I'll just put it I'll put it over here. Right. Eleven 22 hours. Stefan drives to 13651. 13651 South Young Parkway. He's moved out. Oh, shut up. Oh, my watch is telling me I've got to stand up and move a bit. Right. Right, oh, I'll just move my chair out the way and just move a little bit, wiggle a bit. Right. So, you got him going to um, his name heading towards the vape shop. Stefan makes a purchase. Hold on, let me hold higher this up just a little bit. Stefan makes a purchase and leaves shortly afterwards. Stefan's vehicle then travels east. Right. So we've got East Highway. One on two. Towards St. Clair, Florida. His vehicle is captured on several traffic cameras as well as license plate readers. Okay. Stephen's vehicle then travels on. I'm not writing this down now. I can catch up with it an, another time. Stephen's vehicle then travels east on Highway 192 to the wall of St. Clair, Florida. His vehicle is captured on several traffic cameras as well as license plate readers. 13 16 hours, Stephen is seen, is driving South Old Hickory Road. Stephen passes Hickory Tree Elementary at 13 17. At 14 11 hours, Stephen is seen, is driving west. East, yeah, west. So, what was he driving before? Was he driving east then? Uh, he's driving south before. So, now he's driving east, he's driving west. On Highway 192 from Old Kikoo Tree Road, Stefan Vigil now has a spare tire on the rear driver's side of the vehicle. Um, 1521 hours, Stefan is seen throwing items in the dumpster in Venetian Bay. So it's like the fourth time he's thrown stuff in the bay. Right, then, then. 
this is when I say we jumped. Right, we jumped. We jumped from 15, 21 hours. Because we know... Oh, God, oh, God. Get this back down. Oops. We know where he was after 15, 21 hours because he was over at... He got that phone call off Jane, didn't he? Right? And he was making his way over to... Well, no. He didn't get the phone call off Jane at 15, 21. Because... 1521, uh, she's still sitting outside the school, so he thinks everything's fine, right? It's not until later that he finds out that Magdalene is missing. On February 27, 2024, 03 18 hours, Jennifer's vehicle is seen driving east on Highway 192 through Kissimmee to St. Cloud, Florida. The vehicle takes the same exact exact path as Stefan. At 0335 hours, Jennifer's vehicle is seen driving south on Old Hickory Tree Road, Highway 192. The vehicle is then seen turning west on Highway 192 from Old Hickory Road at 409 hours. So that's like another 30 minutes gone by. Right. The vehicle then returns to Venetian Bay at approximately 0430 hours. More detailed timeline is concluded in Detective Cabral's supplement. I will find that in the documents that I've got, believe me. While the arrest warrant was being written and obtained by Detective Moore, at approximately 16.45 hours, I contacted Jennifer in a conference room at the sheriff's office. Jennifer was asked questions about Magdalene being missing and the dynamics of the household. Jennifer stated to her and Stephen had been dating on and off for approximately seven years. Move on, love. You should have just moved on. Kicked him gone. Once he's gone, he's gone. He's gone. Don't take back. Stephen had moved out of the home in the later part of 2023, November, December. Jennifer stated that while they were together, they would either all sleep in the same bed or Magdalene would sleep with her when Stephen was not there. When asked if it was normal that Stephen and Magdalene slept together without her being there, and she said yes. I cannot ever get over that. And mother saying, yeah. You know what I mean? Jennifer stated if she needed a good night's sleep due to anxiety, she would ask them to sleep in a different room. Well, what was causing your anxiety so bad that you could not sleep? Your medicine was enough to knock an elephant out. You know what I mean? Even a housemate said... One night when our car alarm, uh, Jane's car alarm was going off, right? She tried to wake Jane up and it took her a while to get her to wake up because she is totally out of it. Right? So what is so bad that your anxiety was overriding all that? Jennifer stated she woke up the next morning by Stefan attempting to put a leash on their dog. Stefan told Jennifer to go back to bed because he would take care of walking the dog. So Jennifer went back to sleep. Jennifer stated Stefan said she was not, she said he was impressed on how quickly they were able to get out of the house to go to school. Now, just take this hypothetically. Right. Just imagine Jen had nothing to do with this, right, with Magdalene. And he said, let's go back to sleep now. She said, no, 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 I'm up now, I'm awake, I might as well get up, you know what I mean? What if she got up and then there's no Magdalene? 
what would he have said then? What would she have done? If that is a possibility, that she had nothing to do with this. Uh, just get old. Uh, get, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, um, Jennifer went back to sleep. Jennifer said Madeline must have got dressed for school in her room because her phone was left on her nightstand. Jennifer said Stephen said he was impressed on how quickly they were able to get out of the house to go to school. Of course he was impressed. He was impressed how he managed to get Paula and Madeline out of that house with no one seeing him. Oh yeah, he was impressed. He was well and truly impressed. No one saw him. Right? Stefan told Jennifer that Madeline was asleep most of the way to the school. It's not that far to the school. It's really not. And I can't see a young girl falling asleep in the car. Not mean she's got the thought, the thought of school looming ahead of her. Right? So, I really can't see a young girl falling asleep. Plus, not only that, I can imagine her wanting to listen to her music on her phone or put her earpieces piece, ear in and listen to watch a, a TikTok or something like that, you know what I mean? So, I can't imagine you sleeping. I really couldn't. But we know that's a load of BS anyway. <laughs> Stefan told Jennifer that Magdalene would sleep most of the road to school. However, he was still able to ask her about eating at McDonald's, according to Stefan. Jennifer stated they recently ended their relationship and he moved back to Northport, Florida to stay with his parents. Hmm. Because his parents weren't paying the rent no more. He had to move back. They weren't paying the rent. So if they're not paying the rent and you two had split up, where was he going to be sleeping? You know what I mean? Jennifer said Stefan took her vehicle. I asked Jennifer who drives. Hold on. Jennifer said she ended the relationship because he was a messy person. Well, come on, Jen. We've seen your bedroom. You're not that tidy yourself. Yet you had a go at your daughter for keeping her bedroom a mess. You know what I mean? You didn't realise that a one white crock was in your bedroom. Did you not see that? Oh, no, you wouldn't because you didn't tidy the bedroom up Monday morning. You didn't even pick her clothes up off the bathroom floor that she wore the night before. Be it her pyjamas or a blue dress. But we know the blue dress looks like it was in the wash basket. So... Is a messy person. Jennifer said she didn't have a sexual relationship because her medications affected her sex drive. I asked Jennifer who drives to go around searching for Madeline. Who drives her vehicle? And she said only her and Stefan. Jennifer said Stefan took her vehicle Monday night because he decided to go drive around searching for Madeline. This would have been when Stefan travelled back to St. Cloud in the early morning hours Right of second and twenty seventh. Um, OC detectives had previously shown Jennifer photographs of Stephen's for identification purposes. Jennifer did not want to believe Blank and Stephen were engaged in Blank activity. Jennifer asked to see the image of Stephen and Blank, pulled out a printed picture from Stephen's Google Drive that showed Blank with Stephen's Blank in her mouth. Jennifer said she didn't recognise anything in the pictures as if she was in denial. 
However, she became visibly upset shortly after these questions. I excused myself and told her that I was going to speak with Stefan. Now, this would have been on the Wednesday. Because they had them both at the police station for that press release. Right? I contacted Stefan in an interview room at the sheriff's office. Stefan was asleep. When I entered the room along with Corporal Ilgen, after introducing ourselves, I explained the reasons why we were there speaking with him. I read Stefan his Miranda warnings, which he waived and agreed to speak with us. Stefan stated he had known Jen for sev- several years and they date for most of that time. I asked Stefan what the sleeping arrangements were within the home. Stefan stated that Madeline typically sleeps with Jennifer in Jennifer's bed. Stefan stated Madeline wanted them all to sleep in the same bed when he returned from away from several months. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I asked Stefan if he stayed in the same room as Madeline the entire night. Stefan said he was up and down, maybe to grab a drink, but he never slept in Jennifer's bed. So, um, actually, we did cover this bit last night because I remember saying, that wasn't the question he asked you. He asked you if he stayed. I asked Stefan if he stayed in the same room as Magdalene the entire night. This is Stefan's answer, right? The question was, if he stayed in the same room as Magdalene the entire night, Stefan answers, he was up and down, maybe to grab a drink, but he never slept in Jennifer's bed that night. Okay, but you didn't answer the question. Stefan stated Magnum would set her alarm for about for around 7, 7 30 hours and would then snooze for a while. Stefan stated they eventually make it, make it out the door. This contradicts his prior statement saying they made good time getting out of the house to drop her off. It is true. If she got up at 7 30, no way was she getting out of the house at 7 45. No way. Stefan said he was giving Jennifer updates as the morning went along, meaning he was telling Jennifer when Madeline was getting. I'm going, I've, I've just remembered, I've just seen something. I've just seen something here. Alright. I just want to blank this out. I thought there were several parts I probably missed out. Right. Just checking. Right. So Getting dressed and leaving. This also was also not true as Jennifer stayed. The only time they spoke is when he was getting the leash on the dog and he told her to go back to sleep. Stephen said they had time. That's another thing, right? He goes, oh, we had time to kill. There's no rush. But then in the next sentence, sentence he said, we quickly went back to the apartment. Wow. If you if you have time to kill and there's no rush, why use the word quickly? I just think fit right. You go, we took our time going back. You know what I mean? We had time to kill. So we took our time going back to the home. But he didn't he said we had time to kill, so we quickly went back. That doesn't make sense to me. However, Stefan arrived at the gap. He had his gate clicker in his hand while speaking. All right, hang on. Time to kill since it was too early for school, so he was turned down because he forgot his gate clicker for the complex. However, when Stefan arrived at the gate, he had his gate clicker in his hand while speaking with the security guard at the Venetian bar. How blatant is that? 
is talking to the security guard while there's a dead person in his... Oh, my Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Stefan said Magdalene was wearing a green sweatshirt, black shorts and white crocs when he dropped her off. This is a different description he provided deputies during the initial contact. Yes, here's the one who said she was wearing green sweatshirt, white crocs, blue jeans. And the mum was the one who said, no, no, black shorts. And he said, black shorts? He said, yes, black shorts. Right? As the interview went on, I asked Stephen if Magnum has ever been sexually active with anyone in the past. Stefan stated there was an incident when she was younger. Much younger. Stefan said Magdalene did something with her phone or camera, but she wasn't scolded for it. Now, I'm thinking, right, this is just me going way out the box. You know when we know he's got photos of her when she was like eight, seven, eight? She'd be about that age when they first got to seven, together, seven, eight years old. Perhaps he'd been taking photos of her then, and she's got her hold of her mum's phone and thought she could do the same thing, you know what I mean, by taking photos herself. Yeah? Because if... if if you are grooming a child and you're taking photos of that child, yeah, that child thinks that that is normal. That's all she knows. She thinks it's normal. So she can't see any harm in it when she's doing it herself, when she's taking photos of herself on the phone. Because Stefan does it with her. Stefan said Magdalene did something with a phone or cam camera but wasn't scolded for it. No, because you groomed her and you knew she was only copying what you'd been doing yourself. Now, if I had a child who did that, I'd be going, what made you do that, sweetheart? You know what I mean? I'd take her on her own, away from him. Right, just take it to the river, the pond at the back, and sit with her and talk to her, without him around, and say, what made you do that, sweetheart? You know what I mean? Why would you take a photo of whatever, or do whatever you did with the camera? Yeah? Why would you do that? And then perhaps he might say, well, step on, does he? You know what I mean? Stefan was arrested for when the victim was under 12 years old and possession of child corn. A search warrant was obtained to collect DNA from Stefan. This one, oh no. Oh no, I've missed some out. Oh when I asked Stefan if he had saved pictures, pictures to look at, he said, some, he said sometimes. Stephen stated he did have pictures of him and Madeline saved to the account. When asked Stephen about the, all the pictures he had saved, Stephen then asked if he should be talking to a lawyer. Shortly after that, Stephen requested an attorney. Stephen was requested for what blank, blank, when the victim was under 12 years old and possession of child call. A search warrant was obtained to collect DNA from Stephen. This one was ex executed by Orange County Detectives and Forensics Unit. Stephen was then transported to Orange County Jail to be held on zero bond. While I was conducting interviews with Jennifer and Stephen, Detective Bill Ardez from the Orange County Sheriff's Office learned the garbage. Well, they took the, what they did, they took the garbage dumpster away and put it in a secure area and emptied it out in a secure area so it couldn't be contaminated by anything else. Right? A uh, crime scene investigator located a tie with, which, which is in the trash 
and near the child was a plastic bag that looked similar to the one Stefan is seeing on camera thrown away. Inside the bag was a black backpack with a wire print. Inside the backpack was an Orange County Public Schools laptop computer belonging to Madeline. Also in the bag was a single white single with croc. It should be white croc. Croc matched the one found in the residence when Madeline resided. Yeah. Also in the bag, uh, blah, 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 blah. The, these items were collected by OCSO, crime scene investigators, and submitted into evidence. Uh, uh, Jennifer confirmed on the morning and she was working up by Stephen trying to put a leash on the dog. Jennifer got up and Stephen told her not to worry about it and got back, go back to bed, sleep. Jennifer said she doesn't remember Stephen coming back in to tell her goodbye or saying goodbye to Madeline. I asked her about writing a statement to Orange County saying about seeing Madeline on Monday morning. Jennifer stated she wanted to believe she saw Madeline, but she actually did not see her. Jennifer said Madeline picked out close to her in the evening. On the 2nd and 25th, 24th, I asked Jennifer to explain her and Stephen's sex life, which she described as vanilla. Stephen would want to have blank sex with Jennifer, but she said she didn't want to. We later spoke about what medication Madeline was taking. Jennifer stated Madeline was on. This was so that when they did the toxicology, if it comes back with anything else in her system, you know what I mean? So. That was just sleeping medication and anxiety medication. I think I'd have anxiety living with her and him. You know what I mean? I asked Jennifer what is her morning routine. She makes sure Madeline has her school items ready while making her breakfast and lunch. Jennifer said she makes sure Madeline takes her medication before school. Then she'll take her to school. Jennifer said her entire life was dedicated to Madeline. When I asked Jennifer about the sleeping arrangements, Jennifer said Madeline would sleep with her most of the time. And when Stefan was there, they would all sleep in the same bed together. Jennifer said when her and Stefan broke up, she could only think of a few times that Madeline slept with, Sep with Stefan in a separate room. Jennifer said she didn't feel comfortable with Madeline sleeping with Stefan and it didn't look right to her. I asked Jennifer when she started feeling comfortable with it. She said she never was comfortable. So why do we? Why did you send your daughter up to room four with a 37-year-old man? Why? I challenged Jennifer about telling them to go sleep. And she said it was selfish move because she wanted to go. Yes, selfish. Inconsiderate. Neglect. Me, me, me. This is where I think the interview is where we're going to be listening to next time. Right, I'm going to try and get it so that I can um, edit it. In. But I will recognize, give recognition to whoever video it is, don't worry. At approximately 19.30 hours on February 29th, Sergeant Pooh and myself contacted who is one of Jennifer's roommates. See, they've got all the names here. So I was taking the names out. Place Jennifer, Jennifer stated that state she arrived home at approximately 23.30 hours on the 25th. I asked if she'd seen Madeline or Jennifer when she got home on the 2nd of the 25th. Oh, this is the housemate, sorry. Stated she did not see either of them and said when Jennifer takes the sleeping medication, she falls into a deep sleep. Stated she did not hear noises coming from the bedroom 
she did hear noises coming from the bedroom next to her, which would be Stefan's room, bedroom, where he and Madeline still lived. Jennifer told Blank that her and Stefan had not had sexual relations within the past six months. She woke up between 9, 9 30 hours and went downstairs to make breakfast by 10 30 hours. Later, she saw Stefan in the residence at that time. Right, remember? When he was back and. Oh, God. Okay. Right. Uh, well, I'm going to have a look. Let's have a look. Blah, blah, blah. Right, at 10 14 hours, he enters the Venetian Bay. Is gate complex okay? And she said Stefan was acting odd and going up and down the stairs in and out of the apartment that morning. Stefan was also washing clothes. What was he, what was he washing? Which she has never seen him do. When Blank left for work at approximately fifteen forty hours, Stefan was there. Blank got home from work at approximately 23 hours, and that is when Jennifer told her that Madeline was missing. Blank said Jennifer was crying and very emotional. Blank described Stefan's emotions as calm, and that how someone would react if the child was missing. Later during the interview, I showed a photograph, and I listened to this, I showed a photograph that was located in Stefan's phone, of a nude female in a bathroom. I identified the person in the photograph as her, which she did not give permission to take those pictures. These were pictures of him that he took of her underneath the bathroom door. I mean, that is sick. Perverted, sick, you name it. Right. Now, do you remember when she said about that thing about to her ex-husband, apparently when Madeline was getting on a flight one day to go and visit her dad? And she's going on about hoping no one puts a camera in the bathroom and whatever. Why would she say That's why. Because she knew. I bet you her housemate told Jen about this. Well, she didn't know, but she did say the housemate did not like sharing. They did have a bathroom upstairs, but the housemate, one had a bathroom en suite, and the other housemate had the other bathroom. But she had to come out of her bedroom, out of her room, to the bathroom. But she said she didn't want to be sharing it with Stefan. And that's why Stefan would use uh, Jen's on suite downstairs. At approximately March the 1st, 11.15, I detected small and I contacted Jennifer at residence for a follow-up interview. I advised Jennifer that we would take her to the Orange County Sheriff's Office to retrieve her vehicle. I advised Jennifer that I would take her over the investigation and there would be a press conference this day to Nancy. Jennifer asked when we when I said we did, said we, did we mean homicide? Why would she say homicide? You know what I mean? I told Jennifer, I meant we as the Kissimmee Police Department, but yes, we will be working it as a homicide because we had a strong belief that Madeline was deceased. Jennifer became silent for a few moments and started to cry. Hmm. Didn't seem too upset in the car ride to the press conference, did she? I told uh, Jennifer became silent for a few moments and started to cry. Jennifer said she had not been avoiding, she had been avoiding the internet because of all the things people said you're linked to social media and it's traumatising her for her. Oh, what a shame. We well, should have been a decent mother then. We weren't even a half decent mother. 
She only first said she has since been staying at her sister's house because she didn't want to be seen in public. I asked Jennifer is Madeline ha if Madeline had any siblings and she said she was married to and he had a daughter that was raised along with Madeline. That would be the only person who would be considered as a sibling, Jennifer said. Stefan has been around Blank and his daughter Blank a few times. Jennifer said Blank lived in Blank, which is by SeaWorld. I asked Jennifer if her, her or Stephen was in contact with Blank, and she said yes by text messages and phone calls. I asked Jennifer if I could see those messages and send me a phone, and I and said yes. I asked Jennifer how Blank found out about Madeline, and she said she told him. Blank was in shock when, she heard, when he heard the news. Jennifer said she had to go out and purchase some small items, and she felt like she shouldn't be outside because of the attention this case has received. Jennifer said she didn't want to end up hospitalised. While a lot of people think she is in some sort of a recovery centre, right, because no one's seen or heard of her. Detective Smallwood asked Jennifer what medication she used to help her sleep. Jennifer said it was called Giordan, but the bottle says Ziprazidone. Jennifer said she has to take it with food. I must admit, right, I, I'll, I'll admit here, right, I'm on a certain medication, and I'm on it again for the next three years, right, and I went to get the prescription filled out one week, and they said, we haven't got the one on the list, but we've got this one. I went, well, that's no use. They said, it's the same thing. It's just a different name, just a different brand. It does the same job. I said, you sure about that? They said, yeah, it's just a, a different brand. So perhaps she was told it was gear gun, but when she had the bottle or the medication refilled, it's coming a different name. Just a different brand, but just does the same thing. Jennifer said she has to take it with food, and within 30 minutes to an hour, she's asleep. Jennifer said Madeline will take hydroxine for anxiety, also to help her sleep. What do I take? I can't remember what I take for my anxiety. God, my anxiety plays up. It's a bit like OC, AC, uh, uh, AC. ADs or whatever, attention deficit disorder, whatever. Right, I'm here then, everyone. I'm so hyped up, and it's like I'm on batteries, running on batteries. My batteries are not going to run out, and my body won't shut down, and my head's doing one, two, a trillion things in my head. And Jennifer said, blah, blah. Jennifer was asked if Stefan has. Attempted to reach out to her since he was resting, she became upset and said no. And it would be stupid if he did. Yeah, this is the interview. Right, where, which I was listening to last night. Remember last night, that last night, remember last night that he had a, a sex king. Jennifer said, always refused when Steph Stephen would want blank sex with her. Jennifer also remembered that Stefan would be easily angered and very irritable and negative about things. So could you imagine if Madeline said no? How uh, irritable and angry he could have got. Don't forget he had that gun in that bedroom. Jennifer states she had given Stefan the benefit of the doubt about when he told her he dropped her off at school. Jennifer said Stefan is a master liar and a master manipulator. And she had recently had this, had this conversation with Chris. Stefan is a master, uh, Stefan's father, Jennifer, Steph, Chris, Stefan's father. Jennifer assumed law enforcement were looking into Stefan because he was the last person to see Madeline. And she wanted to believe he had nothing to do with her going missing. Jennifer said once we showed her the photograph blank, that is when she realised Stefan was guilty. 
I asked her to watch the door step on was guilty of, and she cried, he's been grooming and abusing my child. Hmm, he has. And you didn't notice. Not one little thing. I asked Jennifer if she thought Stephen killed Magdalene, and she said, at this point, I do. I asked her why she thought that, and she said, we, sh we showed her a photograph. I imagine a slumped over in Stefan's vehicle. Jennifer said she felt like Stefan jumped her body somewhere, but she didn't know where. I pressured Jennifer on where she thought Stefan would have jumped Madeline's body. She kept saying she didn't know. Jennifer became upset and said she would tell us if she knew, because she wanted her child back. We arrived at OCSO, where Jennifer was taken inside to be interviewed by Detective O'Malley and Detective Smalls further. Right. So, a news conference was held, blah, blah, asking for the public cloud. Right. At approximately 1600 hours, crime analyst Donna Sita from Osceola County Sheriff's Office contacted the witness, to blank, blank, told Donna he saw a person matching the description of Stefan with a tire oil in his hand, standing next to a silver sedan on Hickory Tree Road. Hmm. Thomas believed it oh the believed this was O2 on at approximately thirteen twenty hours. Blank provided pictures of the location where he saw this person and pointed out the location on a map to Donna. Donna then relayed this information to other deputies who were searching the area for Magdalene. Oh, la, la. Captain Laurie Mongone and Sergeant Sherry Swank responded to the area like, oh, again, I haven't got his name. If it goes over it enough time, it just goes really dark. Identified. Sergeant Swan knew the property owner who provided access to the lock gates to the property. Captain Mingol walked towards a row of bamboo trees to the left of the open gate. Captain Mingol located a small body wearing blue jeans and a green sweater. The body had dried grass and hair on top of the body. This information was relayed to Major Fred Hinderman, who noticed Captain, notified Captain Shag. Captain Shag called me to let me know that Magdalene's body was located. Well, that was so... Um, it's, I know this is going to sound strange for me to say, but I was watching that day, right? Because there's... The news media was all over this one area because all the police were there and there's like this little building and all these police were all over this building and all over this area. Then all of a sudden, you see them getting in the cars and pulling away and, and zooming off down the road and thinking, where are they going? So the helicopter then following the cars, right, which led them to where they were there. Right? Detective Small with Corporal Halligan and I responded to 5670 Hickory 2 Road where we contacted several deputies with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. It was decided the Osceola County Sheriff's Office forensic units would be processing the scene. Asked to be brought to where the body was located, forensic supervisor Emily Sega walked me to the area where the body was. Based upon the clothing description seen on several videos, the body did appear to be that of Magdalene. The lock to the farm was still locked and didn't appear to be tampered with. Stefan would have had to drop Magdalene's body over the barbed wire fence or where the gate was, then move her body to the location where she was found. Now that is sound of risky, isn't it? 
if he moved that in broad daylight, because this guy said he's seen him changing the tire at about one, something in the afternoon. Clear? Then he's took her out the boot and he's putting her over a gate and then climbing and picking her up and carrying her to these trees. Anyone could have come past in a car and seen him carrying her. Anyone? Then move, um, the, the locker was, didn't appear to be tampered with. Stefan would have had to drop Madeline Boggy body over the barbed wire fence or where the gate was. Then move her body to the co co location where she was found. I contacted the Orange Osceola County Medical Examiner's Office and asked them for them to respond to collect Mag Madeline. My, oh God. This is just, you know what I mean, it's... Medical examiner investigator Keesing Robinson responded and assisted in processing and preserving the body of Madeline. When Madeline was removed from underneath the dried grass and hay, I immediately, I was, I immediately was able to identify her by a specific mole she had on her cheek. Madeline shows signs of decomposition to one side of her face and her hands. Madeline was wearing a green hoodie. The hoodie portion was over the top of her head. Blue jeans and white socks. The bottom of Madeline's socks were clean, which indicates she did not walk anywhere, or the socks would have been dirty on the bottom. I want to know who got Madeline dressed. If she was in her PJs when our mum come home, Right, who got Madeline dressed? Because it's very goddamn hard getting it. I know as a care worker getting people dressed is hard enough. You know what I mean? People who are with limited movement. Getting them dressed is hard enough. But getting someone dressed who is not able to move at all, like move the arms and the elbows and... Oh, that would be horrendous to get someone dressed. Socks would have been dirt on the bottom, so it meant she was carried. Magdalene was transported to the medical examiner's office when all autopsy will be performed the following day. I placed a telephone call to Jennifer to let her know that we had located Magdalene and that she was deceased. Jennifer started to cry over the phone and handed the phone to her father to continue to the conversation. I told him that I'll be in touch with the family in the next day or two. On March 2nd, 2024, at approximately 1000 hours, Detective Smallwood and I responded to the medical examiner's office for Madeline's autopsy. The autopsy was performed by Dr. Stephen Giles. Prior to the autopsy, I, I examined Madeline's body when it was initially uncovered. I noticed her socks were clean in the bottom which confirmed my observations when she was located in St. Cloud. During the autopsy, Dr. Charles expressed concern over the hyoid bone in Madeline's neck. Dr. Charles stated the right portion of the bone was not intact, which could possibly be related to her being strangled. Dr. Charles listed the initial outcome of the autopsy as pending. On March the 4th, at approximately 1509, Detective Smallwood and I contacted the witness who provided the location to Osceola County deputies. State, Blank stated the following in a sworn statement. Blank stated that he observed the press release in regards to Stefan vehicle. Blank stated he was driving down Hickory Tree Road on the 2nd of 24th, 2024. He noticed the linking on the west side of the road and a male standing next to the vehicle. The vehicle had a spare tyre on the river, rear driver's side. Stated the text the client of his stated the text text the client of his at thirteen twenty eight saying that he was twenty minutes away from his house. 
This will be the time frame where Stephen passes Hickory Tree Elementary at 13.17 hours, showing a photo lined by Officer Vanessa Gary in which he positively identified Stephen as the person who he saw standing next to Lee Lincoln at 5670 Hickory Tree Road. Actually, I must write that down. What is it again? Five, six, seven, eight. Right. Mine. Blank drew on a paper the location of that Stephen's vehicle and identified surrounding trees when Magdalene was found. I asked Blank if anything stood out to him about Stephen as he passed by. Blank states Stephen had a scared look to him. Yeah, thinking, holy shit, someone's just seen me. But thought he was upset due to the vehicle being broken down on the side of the road. Hmm. March the 5th, 14, 19 hours, I made contact with Blank at the Kissimmee Police Department. Blank was identified as Jennifer's ex-husband prior to Stephen. Blank was placed under oath and provided the following statement. Blank stated he married Jennifer in 2015 and divorced in 2016 or 2017. He wasn't sure. Blank stated he met Jennifer through dating website. Stephen stated... Um, Oh, shit. Stated they lived in Venetian Bay. Oh, I'm not caught all the names I've on. Right. They lived in Venetian Bay while they was made in the same location as Jennifer is living now. When they was living there together, it was... Blank, Jennifer, Ju Juan, Jennifer's father, Magdalene, and Blank, his daughter. Blank, Blank, stayed, Juan stayed, Juan, Juan stayed in the bedroom downstairs. He and Jennifer stayed in a room upstairs, and both Magdalene and Blank had their own bedrooms upstairs as well. I asked Blank how the relationship was with Jennifer when they were together. Blank stated it was good in the beginning, but later on in the relationship, Jennifer began, began having mental health issues. Hmm, wonder why. Right, Blank said there was times when he would have to take care of the household when Jennifer was having a bad time with her mental health. Blank decided to remove Blank, that's his daughter, from that atmosphere, which is when they decided to get divorced. Blank said he considered Magdalene as his daughter due to the amount of time they spent together. Well, you didn't spend that much time together. You only spent, like, two years. Or a year. 18 months, maybe. Blank stated he loved and cared about Magdalene, even though the relationship with Jennifer didn't work out. Blank said he thought Magdalene was in good hands, so he tried to become friends with Stephen since he was going to be in Magdalene's, Stefan, since he was going to be in Magdalene's life. Blank said he visited Jennifer and Stefan when they lived in Northpool. Right, Florida. Blank was playing games with Stefan, which ended in a small argument. Ever since that argument of a board games, I haven't spoken since. I asked Blank where he lived where he, when he was living in Florida. Blank said he lived in an area called Blank, which is near SeaWorld. Blank would move to Blank in 2022. Blank would keep in contact with Magdalene and would inquire how she'd been treated by Stefan. I asked...
Uh, I asked Chick Brian a sleeping arrangement thing. He's sleeping with Jennifer. Blank said Magdalene would sleep with Jennifer, but he wasn't comfortable with Magdalene sleeping in with them in the same bed. I asked Blank if he had seen any demeanor changes with Magdalene. Blank said Magdalene seemed off for the past for the last few years. Why? For the last few years. So since the age of say ten. Which he thought it could have been Jack Magdalene going through puberty, but started during the end of elementary school. Blank, 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 said Jennifer wasn't different, but she was always trying to figure out her mental health medications. Jennifer recently disclosed to Blank where recent where recent medication that she had been taking, oxalate, meaning tired and sleeping. I asked Blank how he heard about Magdalene and he stated that his wife saw something online. Blank talked with Jennifer on the second and Jennifer stated Stefan took Magdalene to talk, made a bunch of mistakes after he got deleting his phone. Jennifer also stated Stefan and Magdalene both forgot the phones when he took her to school. Blank said he believed Magdalene forgot her phone but the thought but thought it was odd that Stefan forgot his phone because he always had his phone and was typing on it all the time. Blank said he wanted to make sure he spoke with Jennifer over the phone because he wanted to hear the tone of her voice. Blank described Jennifer's tone as being anxious if something was wrong. Blank said they were speaking over a speakerphone and, and Stefan was with Jennifer. Stefan made the comment that he felt guilty because He forgot his phone and then he accidentally reset it. Blank couldn't believe that Stefan was saying over the phone. Jennifer began saying what time she thought she woke up because of the dog. And Stefan interjecting told her that he would take care of the dog so he, she could rest. I asked Blank if he knew why Jennifer didn't go to Magdalene's birthday party. Blank said Jennifer's family cannot, can be a lot to hang your son sometime. And if she's starting a new job. He understood, he understood why she wasn't there. I asked Blank if he felt Jennifer had anything to do with what happened, and he said it doesn't feel like she would deliberately know because she had family that could help with her. With her, this bloke does not deserve to be breathing in the same air that you, decent people out there, with families, with young children, who care for their children. Love their children, nurture their children, support their children. Right? He does not deserve to be breathing the same air as you lot. He does not. He's vile, he's disgusting, he's manipulating. But I tell you something, that video, you probably will have seen it by Monday. By the time I put it out, so I don't really mind. But she turns the waterworks on and off at a click of a finger. She really does. One minute she's hysterically in tears, next minute she's like, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking, hold on, hold on. Two seconds ago, you're using hysterical tears, crying. And now you're all calm and serious. Come on, girl. And it is. Admitted on that interview, she suffers from bipolar. She's bipolar. Perhaps that's why she can turn uh, emotions on and off like she does, because she's bipolar. I don't know. But she states in that interview, uh, one reason, one of the reasons for her claiming disability is because of her bipolar. And I went, what? When did that come up? Never heard of her being bi I mean, suffering bipolar before, being bi bipolar. I knew she had anxiety and whatever else. But bi bipolar? No, I hadn't heard of that before. And she still doesn't mention, talk about Madeline's, um Right, 
got my it's all right my mic seemed a bit loose anyway so but she still does not talk mention anything about her daughter using an inhaler why not she talks about all her other medications but not once has she ever mentioned her daughter uses an inhaler the school does you know what I mean? The school mentions it, but the mother doesn't. Why is that? Maybe she wants it, doesn't he? Right, I'm going to leave it there for tonight, folks. Because I've got to take my medication. I've got to take my medication. Otherwise, I won't, I'll be up again all night and sleeping all day. Right? So, I'm going to leave it out there. I'm sorry this document is taking it so long to get through but i have been showing videos as well because i didn't just want to sit here reading a document page after page i wanted to show videos as well to break it down a little bit and today we've done a bit of map time just showing basically what they're saying where he went up until 3 30 in the afternoon i've still got some more map time to do and if anyone can help me with putting pins pinging something on a map on google maps please email me email me i've tried everything to ping things on a map if i've got a building yeah i can ping it on there but when there's no building, I cannot put a ping mark there to say what time he came through that gate or what time he left that gate or what time he was seeing at this junction. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to be able to do is put little pins in place with a timing on. So I can click on it and say, this is when he was here at this time, he was here at this time, and map his route out that morning. But I just can't. I'm going to try Google Earth, see if I can try it on Google Earth. So, but if anyone can help me, please email me. Because I'm pulling my hair out at the moment sometimes when I'm going on maps. And I'm like, oh, why won't you let me put my marker down? So, anyway, thank you all for watching. Like I said at the beginning, if you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. Please share it. Please comment. I do like to read your comments. And hopefully... We'll get through this. I would say I'd be on tomorrow night, but I've got my grandson. If I can get him to go to bed early enough, I'll be on. Okay? But he tends to come in and out, so I don't like to be on when he's here. It's not fair. So, I'll be back on Sunday, though. So, I'll finish, we'll finish this off Sunday. Because we've got we're on page one. What page are we on? Page 14, we've got 50, 52. So, we've got all this yet. Look. But all the list, you know what I mean? It's horrendous. But I think there's a lot we can miss out. The bit about what Chris was saying. The father. So there are bits we could probably miss out. But this is what I really want to show is this like the detailing of the how the phone got moved around and how it could tell how many steps had been taken and how, what floor it was on. And that's very interesting. But hang on for that. Hang on, I've got to save it first. Because I've got some right i've got some alterations hanging on so now i can close it anyway so i'm going to leave it there everyone so until i see you again have a lovely weekend it's friday tomorrow it's your last day at work enjoy your weekend stay safe and i'll see you all sunday and thank you for being here for me tonight. Till then.
Take care.